It's time for JUCO Jam, presented to you by Dream Big Athletics, hosted by Tad Slowick, an exciting new podcast bringing you all the great action from JUCO baseball. Here you'll find weekly updates from around the country, highlighting the teams, players, and coaches who impact the game at the junior college level. Everything you want to learn about JUCO baseball can be found here and on our website at dreambigathletics.com. There you'll find our weekly team rankings, the top player rankings headed into the spring, and all the news of what is happening in the game at the junior college level. On this show, you will have many guests, coaches, players who will give us insight on the day-to-day, behind-the-scenes working of junior college baseball. And now our host, Tad Slowick. Welcome, baseball fans, to the Juco Jam Baseball Podcast. I'm your host, Tad Slowick, and here with me again is uh, my good friend, uh, Lou Temple. Lou, how are you doing today? woo Fishing's fine, Tad Slowick, and here we are starting the season, and uh, we're off to a great start, are we not? Um, D1 is well underway, and we're seeing a lot of parity amongst these teams that are playing. They're knocking each other off, playing pretty even baseball, but a few teams have stood out, one of which is Weatherford, who you like a lot at the top of your list. Tell us about some of the other teams you're thinking are are getting off to a good start. Yeah, well, Weatherford to me is the complete uh, package. They're both good offensively and uh, on the mound, so they're going to be a strong team throughout the year. Uh, The other teams that I really like out west, uh, I like uh, the two clubs I like is uh, Central Arizona and Salt Lake. Both have great uh, pitching, you know, solid lineup, but great pitching. A lot of depth pitching-wise, a lot of talent on the mound, uh, you know, for both teams. I uh, like, uh, you know, they got hard-thrown Cameron Bott over at Salt Lake, along with, you know, Shea Timbers got off to a real good start for them, too. Uh, for uh, for Central Arizona, Toby Harris has done a good job. And then this uh, Carter Muck, uh, who transferred in at, at break from the University of Kansas has really got off to a good start for them. So I think he's going to help them along with the depth that they got from left-handed pitching with, you know, Cooper Foster, Nick Gibson. So they got some good, strong guys on the mound. A team I like out of North Carolina is uh, Gaston. Uh, I think they've been doing a great job uh, offensively led by Ben Karpowitz over there. You know, they got some good guys on the mound too to get them going. Also, uh, in, in a panhandle, uh, that's going to be a battle in the panhandle this year. All those teams are good, uh, but uh, Pensacola State and Gulf Coast State have got off to the best starts. Uh, Pensacola State is is very talented offensively with Carter McCauley and Bladen Plain leading the way over there. Um, Gulf Coast has, has shown great stuff uh, on the mound for them with Cooper Whited. Uh, Mason Laredo and Ezekiel Rojas. So they got a, a trio of guys that get the job done over there. Uh, another team that started off to a great start, Georgia Highlands. Uh, they had a big battle with uh, Walter State this past weekend and split with them. Uh, you know, they're led by a young freshman, uh, Luke Orpi at shortstop. Uh, so look for them to, to be a factor. Uh, teams out of uh, Texas that I really like are, uh, you know, I, I like Tyler. You know, saw them a couple weeks back. They got the big three, I think, with Douglas Bauer, uh, Danny Valdez on the mound, and then uh, Ryan Brown, who I really like as outfielder. Got a lot of tools, can uh, throw and uh, swing the bat with power. So, you know, uh, Temple also has got Cole Tabor, uh, who's uh, letting him go. So, uh, you know, he's swinging a bat good for them. And uh, obviously, I think they probably named that school after you, did they? Absolutely, yeah. That's uh, that's that's my my home school, not my alma mater, but uh, but my, my my homie. So yeah, go Temple. Temple. Yeah, you like Temple, so so yeah. Those two teams out of Texas are are gonna make a splash. Uh, we also got Chattanooga State, who's played real well. East Georgia State, who's been kind of a sleeper team, uh, but they're uh, doing a great job off to a sixteen and two start with uh, Thomas Saxon leading the way offensively for them. And then Connor State, who was a good club last year, you know, I kind of had them a little low key this year. They lost some players, but it looks like they reloaded. They're undefeated so far, uh, led by Wally Diaz. So uh, a lot of good teams in uh, D1. Uh, there's going to be a, a hell of a lot of competition for that top slot. 
Well, already it's very competitive and uh, we're, we're getting it covered. And to help us cover this year, we've invited uh, St. Louis uh, Productions, uh, St. Louis Sports Productions to partner up with us to bring even more Juco baseball. Tad, why don't you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, Joel Anderson does a great job over there with St. Louis Productions. Uh, he, uh, they stream games, uh, so they're looking to stream a lot of Juco games. So if you guys need your uh, game streamed, uh, you know, he's the guy to get that done. Uh, he also does showcases and does uh, recruiting videos too. Does a great job. Uh, the man with the camera does a great job. So uh, St. Louis Productions is, you know, we're looking to do some good things with them and bring you more junior college baseball, you know, so that you can see things. That's just one of the things that Dream Big Athletics is providing. More JUCO baseball. Uh, you can see it through St. Louis Sports Productions. Speaking of Dream Big Athletics, Tad, um, tell us a little bit about some of the things that are coming out on the website there and uh, where to go to subscribe and why we should. Yeah, DreamBigAthletics.com, most comprehensive coverage in JUCO baseball. We got some really good things. Some really uh, good uh, little things that are on the camera on the <laughs> on the website this year. So there, uh, one is uh, you know in preparation for the MLB draft, uh, we're going to list players, give you scouting reports on the players that we think are going to be selected in July. We also got uh, the best available, uh, the uncommitted kids, the JUCO kids, because. That's what we want to do here at Junior at uh, Dream Big Athletics is promote junior college baseball, promote the players so that they get those opportunities at the next level. So we're going to always have a constant list of who the best available players are once they get committed to school, which would be great for them. Uh, we'll take them off, but uh, we'll always have the best uh, uncommitted so that the uh, four-year schools could take a look at that and the fans as well as can keep an eye on who the better players are emerging uh, during the spring season. We're also going to have out uh, our top 10 lists. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about the top 10 defensive shortstops in junior college baseball. It's a great list, a lot of great players on that list, uh, guys who can really pick it. Uh, we're going to also have the uh, JUCO Player of the Month and the JUCO Pitcher of the Month uh, out this week, too. So. A lot to, to be seen on DreamBigAthletics.com. And, uh, you know, like I said, just trying to promote the uh, junior college game. Let me just take a moment to sing the praises of what exactly is going on for you fans, you coaches, you players at Dream Big Athletics. First of all, if you're a fan, comprehensive coverage at DBA is this is where you go. You get to see the lists, the rankings of teams, the rankings of players. You become a member, you get to see who has committed, who is not committed and available. Now, for you coaches, this is particularly interesting because if you're looking for a player, Tad's got one for you, and you know that you can count on his evaluation to find that particular player. Players, you want to be on that list. You want to be somebody that the coaches are looking for and seeking out. Where do they find them? They're coming to Dream Big Athletics. That's another reason to go here to get yourself up on this list and see where you're at. Fans, if you want to know uh, all of the top-ranked professional evaluated players, those lists are available too, all through a subscription at a very nominal fee of $99 for the year. That's $99 for the entire year. That's my pitch. If you're not going to DBA, DreamBigAthletics.com, you're missing out. We don't want that. We want you to be our partner, our friends, and to join us on this movement. Moving right along, Tad, you always pitch player development. You're big on player development, and you see that at the JUCO level. I, I feel like that's why you focus so hard on junior college baseball, is this is where you really see players being developed. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the player development is definitely my sweet spot. This is what I've done my whole career in baseball, scouting and, and the development of players. And I think junior college baseball does it as good as anybody. Uh, the coaches do a great job of uh, bringing these kids along and uh, turning them into good ball players. And a lot of players just need opportunity and need that little seasoning. You know, some just need to be in a lineup every day to show what they can do. So, uh, they get that opportunity at junior college baseball. Division one baseball, 
has been so good lately that it's really hard, you know, with so many good teams at the D1 level to, you know, break in as a freshman and, and, and you know, get in the lineup right away and get your reps and get your opportunities to play. So junior college baseball is a great alternative. We're seeing a lot of kids transfer back out, go to junior college baseball, get their work in, get their development done, and then head back to the D1s or on to the professional level. So uh, we're seeing it as a, as a great tool, great opportunity for you guys, especially the players who don't get what they want out of, uh, out of the recruiting process out of high school. You know, get to a junior college, get to these places that have great facilities, great coaching, and, you know, get an opportunity to play against college-level kids for a couple of years and then – Get yourself on to one of those Division One schools or another four-year school that you can finish your education off. So uh, it's great opportunity. So, what I like about the development issue is that you are playing. You're playing games and you're competing. You're 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 not just in a cage getting reps. You're not playing simulated games. You're out there with a full schedule against a a wide variety of competition in the form of, of, of pitching kids from different areas of the country coming together, coming from different programs and competing. These, these are coaches that are putting programs together and, and teeing it up with high expectations to win. And the, the, the ballparks, the stadiums, the facilities are all top notch and the competition is fantastic at the junior college level. So I'm in agreement with you and in accordance with you, Tad, on the development situation of JUCO baseball. And so we're, we're big advocates of that. And by the way, that is the first segment of Temple Number Tapes five. right there, player development. And we'll look forward to offering more. I appreciate you helping me with that. You know, we have another partner over at Dream Big Athletics that I'd like to just uh, have you speak on. And um, that is somebody who's well into the development of of players, of baseball players, of skills through rep work at MVP Sports Academy. This is where you really go to get um, a, a wide berth of all kinds of opportunities to develop. Tell us a little bit about MVP, Tap. Yeah, I mean, it's a great facility. They got everything here that you're going to need uh, baseball-wise, uh, strength and conditioning-wise. You know, they got it all here, the entire package. So, you know, MVP provides you a place to, to come and develop your skills. And no matter what level you're at, even if you're just a beginner, just starting out, you get an opportunity to play, especially uh, up north here in the winters where it's usually pretty chilly and you can't get outside. Uh this is a good uh, place to get prepared for the spring and summer season. So, uh, like I said, MVP offers all the, the things that you need to be a ball player. All you got to do is you got to do is put in the hard work. So if you put in the hard work, this is a great place for you to be. Right on. Well, our next segment is uh, one of my favorites because it's really what you do, Tad. It's, it's what I've come to know as well. Uh, this I like to call our Foggy Mountain Breakdown. You're going to break down a couple players for us, and uh, you have a couple on your list. Uh, tell us what you got. Yeah, uh, we got uh, Tanner Reeves uh, from uh, Blinn. You know, we've talked about him several times on the show, but just want to get a little bit more in depth. I mean, Tanner's to me, the best hitter in junior college baseball. He's just got great hands, got a great ability to keep his hands inside the ball. And, you know, he could drive the ball to all fields. He's got a great approach uh, and hit with power. I think this guy's going to really hit with power in the long run. Uh, able to square up the, the ball consistently, hits that barrel all the time. And, uh, you know, and able to even uh, when pitchers, have, I've seen pitchers make great pitches against him and he still sit, fights them off for hits. And, uh, you know, it reminds me a little bit about a guy I played with, uh, Mark Grace. Uh, you know, it's kind of a guy who could put the ball uh, where he needs to and, uh, you know, hit any type of pitching. So, uh, you know, he really does a great job of the plate. Uh, you know, some of the things of him, you know, he started out as a shortstop, and I think he can do a, a, a solid job at shortstop. I think uh, when he gets to the higher levels, I think there's going to be some guys with maybe some better tools than him at, at 
defensively at short. But, you know, here's a guy who's a really good athlete who can play multiple positions. Right now, I think his best position is second base, an offensive second baseman, but he could play third base if needs to. Put him out in the outfield also. I think, uh, you know, he's just a guy who can do so much for your baseball team. And, you know, he's going to bring it every day in the middle of the order and uh, be a run producer so at the next level. So I think this guy, you know, he's uh, going to LSU, is committed to LSU. Uh, I think he'd do a great job there. But I, I think his better days are ahead of him in pro ball. And, uh, you know, I really think that, you know, he's the kind of guy who uh, – will succeed and eventually be in the big leagues. I'm going to put you on the spot here, Tad. Are you saying that you think, uh, A, he'll get drafted this year in a position that he should sign, in your opinion? Well, I think there there's going to be a lot of talk about that. I think he's going to be up at the more higher parts of the draft, and it's just going to be a matter of, uh, you know, what, what they draft him at and what he gets offered uh, is going to determine his fate. Um, He's got great opportunity to go to LSU, which is always a great thing. Because, you know, to me, here's a guy who's going to go to LSU and put up great numbers there. And now you're going to have to pay him a, a few million dollars. And, you know, it's, you know, better to get him in the system now, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, he's got two, uh, I think, great paths ahead of him. So. Well, we're we'll keeping an eye out for him uh, for sure. Love hearing about a middle infielder with a bat like that and somebody that is uh, really projects out to be to be a hitter and uh, and a heady defensive player. Sounds like he has good aptitude on the field. He he knows the oh, game, obviously. He's a ball player. Yeah, yeah. He he understands the game. You know, he is his eyesight at the plate. He's able to you know, detect what pitch is coming in and, and really sees the ball well and uh, doesn't get fooled, doesn't get put off balance hardly at all. So I, I really like that, too, the way he stands up there and uh, is able to do things like that. And like I said, you know, here here you got a guy you could put out of different positions and on a daily basis and keep in the middle of your order. So to me, he's uh, invaluable. That's fantastic. Great. Well, that's what you do is you break down players and, um, and, and, and put them in an evaluative report. Uh, that kind of report is available on Dream Big Athletics on several of these players uh, at the professional level. You've got your pro report section and, um, and also an outline of uh, non-commits just yet. Yeah, so we're, um, we're not going to only uh... – Talk about the position guy. We also got to let the pitchers have a little some. So I got thank you. Another, good, good. Another another uh, report on a, a pitcher that I really liked early on. Uh, his name we mentioned him earlier in the show is Carter Muck uh, from uh, Central Arizona, right-handed pitcher, big, strong guy, and everything. He he. Here's a great example of the development process working, and you know we want to see this work out. Uh, you know, he's a guy who went to Kansas, University of Kansas, and has a big arm. He's been up to 97, 98 miles an hour and uh, went to Kansas, was pitching midweek, uh, you know, had a little trouble with his command. And, you know, the, the Division One level is so highly competitive to, to win that, you know, you got to get the job done. And that's just a kind of a good example that we're talking about in the development process. You go to these D1 schools, I don't care what kind of talent you have. You, you don't throw strikes and get the job done. You know, it's it's going to be a tough road ahead for you there. Uh, so that's why, you know, junior college is a good opportunity. So he transferred to Central Arizona at, at break, and I saw him early in the year right out of the chute. And, you know, the kid really threw the ball well. I mean, you know, he was uh, 92 to 94 with a good life on his fastball. And a good, really tight, hard slider, you know, that he threw for strikes and, uh, you know, just had a sharp late break to it. You know, so he's got, this guy's got two plus pitches and can really, uh, I think he's athletic enough to repeat. You know, he, the day I saw him, he really did a good job staying in the strike zone. And one of my favorite things to write on a report uh, always was throws quality fastballs in the zone. So, you know, he's a guy who could get guys out in the strike zone with this stuff. And we talked about that last week, uh, you know, when we were talking about the pitchers kind of pitching around things early on. It, you know, you got to pitch in the strike zone. And this kid can pitch in the strike zone with his stuff. He's got good stuff. 
you know, he's got to keep working hard. He's got to keep smoothing out his mechanics. And, you know, I think he's athletic enough to repeat his delivery and get that consistent release point out front to where this guy, to me, is a high-level guy. And I think, you know, in in my opinion, I, I think that, he, you know, he's definitely MLB draft material. And I think he's a good guy for some team to get in their system to work with and, and develop even further at the next level in professional baseball. Uh, Again, you know, putting you on the spot, Ted Slowick goes out in the draft this year, get him in the system, or uh, takes the uh, the opportunity at the four year to prove himself even more for uh, next year. Yeah, I think I think it, it, this this guy would really benefit from uh, professional baseball and and the things involved with that with the development process. I think one of these programs get him in the, their development process, and he's just going to do nothing but flourish. He's got all the things to pitch at the major league level, stuff wise and body wise, and everything there. So, you know, I think it's just a matter of fine tuning this guy and getting him on the right track. So, uh, you know, to me, you know, he's definitely a pro guy and uh, would benefit from professional baseball and the the coaching there. Got it. Well, there you go. There's our Foggy Mountain breakdown, and uh, we've got two great players, so we're looking forward to that. As we wrap up here, Tad, there's a lot of baseball being played. The weather actually is fantastic here in in Southern California, where I'm at, <laughs> after a little bit of rain. But I know that it's it's spring training in Arizona and Florida for the big league clubs, but the colleges are already playing. Um, I think the weather's great down south in the in the Florida areas, Texas. I, look, even where you are in the Midwest, yeah, pretty good weather. Right up here. Yeah, so uh, everybody's out playing and getting it going and and showing up strong, right? Yeah, I mean the uh, D twos are getting ready to get going. The D two and D three are more of the northern schools, so uh, those teams have uh, have started out a little slower. In the in the process, uh, D two obviously uh, LSU Eunice has got off to a great start. They're like fourteen and zero, and uh, Pearl River's gotten off to a great start, uh, and they got a, lot, a ton of talent down there. So, uh, big matchup this weekend uh, with Heartland down in uh, Heartland, defending uh, Division two uh, national champions, and they're going to be playing at Pearl River. So that's going to be a great matchup. A lot of talent on the field. D3s are going to really start kicking in here. A lot of teams from the north making the trips down south. So we'll have a lot more to report on on D2 and D3 coming up over the next few weeks and months. So uh, I look forward to that. And uh, next week on the show, uh, we're going to go right in your alley again. No, we're not going to talk about Temple all the time, but uh, we're going to talk about a couple of catchers uh, next Great. week. Uh, we're going to compare uh, Blaze Priester, uh, catcher at Meridian, who's committed to go to LSU, and then Jake Bennett, uh, catcher at San Jacinto, who's committed to go to DBU. Two really good catchers, two really good prospects, but a little different in, in their games. Uh, Blaze Priester is a little bit more defensive player, and uh, Jake Bennett's a little bit more offensive player. So we're going to have a little debate on what we think uh, you would take as as a, as a catcher, I mean, obviously it'd be nice to have both, but, uh, you know, just uh, compare that offensive catcher to that def defensive guru catcher. So Right. I'd take either one of those guys, but I'm looking forward to Foggy Mountain Breakdown in both those two, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get into it. And, uh, well, as we wrap up this segment, um, again, reminding everybody to go to DreamBigAthletics.com to subscribe be part of this junior college baseball movement. We so appreciate it and uh, come join us. And, and it, it's been great being here, Tad. Yeah, it's been fun. And I bet, I hope the fishing's good next week too. So it will be fishing's <laughs> fine. <laughs> It'll always be good. So it's fun talking about this, talking about player development and excited to see the season unfold and see these uh, kids emerge as, as, as top players. So it's uh a lot of fun, and I look forward to seeing you next week. And uh, go to DreamBigAthletics.com for all your JUCO needs. Ooh, you take care. Have a good one, and uh, we'll see you next week. Okay, Tad. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Have a good one, buddy. 
You've been listening to Juco Jam. For all your junior college needs, go to dreambigathletics.com. And make sure to tune in to next week's episode of Juco Jam.